Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's season four, episode eight of Greenleaf, entitled Surprise. <laughs> so I'll give a recap of the entire episode and review at the end. And for those of you who have already seen the episode and you just want the review, I will have the minute mark indications in the comments. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny! <laughs> Judy is back in town and she has no problem making her presence known, inquiring to different things, and especially Grace. She's in Grace's office and asks her, I thought it was pretty suspicious and I wanted to know, well, what did you go see Fernando for? And what did you find out? And Grace says, I found out that Harmony and Hope is purchasing all the land of, around the church and why it's such a secret. And Judy says, well, you know, if you wouldn't pull up the blindfold so soon as to what we were doing, then you would have eventually find out. And Grace says, well, don't blindfold me. In other words, don't lie to me and just tell me what's going on. Judy says that we wanted to keep this under the wraps until daddy got back home and he should be returning in two weeks. But we plan on turning this calorie location into a mega church, like a potter's house or something that you would think of that is nationally known, not just something in the country, in the United States, but throughout the world. We want to have a gym and not just a gym. We want to have trainers and they don't just train you. They tell you what to eat. We want to have have restaurants we want to have anything that you can think of on all of this land and if we're gonna go forward with that we need more space for parking we need all of these things so surprise grace tells bishop about the news and he's not happy he doesn't think that this transition is a good thing and lady may she says well you know jacob i can't see why you didn't know what was going on and Carissa didn't know what was going on. And Jacob says, I have no idea and you're fi trying to find someone to blame and I had no idea about this. And we really need to be thinking about charity. And Grace gives him that look like, don't mention anything, don't say anything. And he's like, no, they need to know. Charity is the one that we need to be watching because supposedly she's in love with Phil and she's just she just thinks that he's just such an awesome person. And Bishop and Lady May are just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me that she's spending time with Phil. If anything, Bishop thinks that he's misleading her and playing her like a fiddle and getting information and just tapping into the Greenleaf family, period. So in just a matter of seconds, he can make a decision into thinking and knowing that Phil being involved with charity doesn't seem too wise and it seems like a big lie. So Lady May tells Grace, you know, with all of the things that are going on, we do have an engagement party coming. So with this engagement party coming, let certain people come to see us. They don't know what we're about to say. And the cherry on the top, we're going to invite Connie without formally inviting her by not inviting her. She'll be so interested in why she wasn't invited. She'll have no choice but to ask where her invitation ended up and why wasn't she invited because that would just egg her on and just reel her in. So Lady May knows what she knows and she says maybe we can say some things while we're having our party to maybe influence people that are on the deacon board and maybe we can finally have some say so in our own home. Marissa speaks with Jacob and she lets him know that they didn't get the house that they wanted. Someone had a higher bid and they were able to get the home. And she's very upset and Jacob says, well, we missed out on opportunity. It's unfortunate, but we got to move on. And she has this energy like, I can't believe that he's not more distraught about this and he's not thinking about how badly I wanted this home. But she keeps looking at him with disgust and just with disappointment like, wow, you can't even be happy for me wanting the house and you can't even be angry or a little bit sad that I didn't get this home of my dreams. But she continues on and she says, 
Something that I've always wanted to know, since we didn't get that house, do you know the process of what would happen if your mom and dad were to pass away? Would we get this house? And he says, well, I'm guessing that my mom and dad would have it to where it would belong to our siblings. And she says, well, do you think you can talk to your siblings about what they might do with the house or if they'll stay here, or if they have any interest in the house? And she says, I could ask, but I don't know what my siblings are going to do. And speaking of questions and you asking me questions, I have a few questions for you. What were you doing at Fernando's office and why did you keep it a secret? And immediately she gets insulted. Clearly evidence of being guilty of something. And she goes, well, I was there for you. I was there because remember, I inquired about those cufflinks and I wanted to ask him how I could get you some of those cufflinks. And how dare you ask me where I've been after all of the lies and the cheating that you put me through? So you have some nerve to ask me where I've been or what I've been doing. And it seems to give extra confirmation for Jacob that she's lying about something because he's thinking back at the time where she did inquire about the cufflinks when he was in her presence. And he said, well, they're okay. So it's not something that he really wanted. It's not something that he said, oh baby, I love those cufflinks. I would love to have some of those. So he's just getting more and more confirmation that something isn't right with Carissa and she's got to be lying and hiding something. Sophia notices that Zora and Nikki are bonding more, they're looking at photos, they're talking more, and when Sophia's in the room, Zora really doesn't seem to pay her much attention because she got a new homie. You know, she's talking to Nikki, they're seeming to bond, and she could feel that the bond that her and Zora used to have, it's probably still there, but it's not the same, and she feels left out. Phil is more upset that he didn't find out about the plans of Harmony and Hope concerning the land. And he's upset with Judy that even Grace found out about this information before he did. And Judy looks at him and says, oh, you know, your work is very appreciated. And she has this look of, thank you for all of your, your hard work. And I could care less about how you feel. So there's already this dynamic of, wow, Phil, now you are getting a taste of what their snaky ways uh, were intended for from the beginning. And you just doing the work and you just finding out things and you being deceptive all for their growth and all for their gain. So he's learning more and more of that as we go along. Bishop has a talk with Charity and he tells her that he can't even fathom or understand why she's involved with Phil, a man that was so determined to not only break apart their family, but dig up old dirt and then taking over Calvary in such a way, very dece deceptive. And he can't figure that out. And Charity is just so adamant in telling him, I love him. I know it's early, but you just never can take me for my word that I know what I'm talking about. I'm an adult and despite everything with the church, he's a really good person and I really think you should get to know him. And Bishop says, that's going to be really hard for me to do, but if you choose to do that, then fine. I don't understand it, but I don't. And she says, if you just spend a little time with him and you get to know him, or at least how I know him, maybe you can give him a chance. And Bishop just, just, he just can't believe it and he shakes his head. And he says, just go ahead and invite him to the party. And Charity, she seems thankful, but at the same time, angry that how dare you question what I want to do with my life because I'm grown. I know I'm the baby in your eyes, but I am an adult. So clearly I can do whatever with whomever. Carissa, she speaks with Bishop and she's being very deceptive and conniving. And she tells him, you know, Zora, she's working on this project, and one of the things that she needs with the project is she needs a copy of your marriage license. So I hope that I can see that. Bishop says, yeah, you know, I have that information along with some other documentation in a safe. I think I remember the code, but let me go look. 
and I'll get back with you later. And Krista says, well, I don't have anything to do. I'll come with you. They go to the area where the safe is located and she is really focused and looking, trying to get the safe combination numbers so clearly she can get into it later. He's getting into it and he's so naive and not thinking that why would Carissa want to know the combination and she wouldn't do anything like that. So why should I cover up the safe combination? So he's very trusting and he keeps turning the safe and she's very, very concentrated on trying to memorize those numbers. She's looking and she seems as if she's captured the combination lock code. He opens it and he says, oh yes, here's a copy of this marriage license and I need you to take very good care of that and be careful because that documentation means a lot. And she says, what else is in there? He says, oh, my will and a lot of other things. And she's making mental notes like, mm, there's a will in there and there's some other stuff. Okay, well, great. He gives her the documentation. He closes the safe. And as Carissa's leaving the room, we have Lady May is passing by her. And Carissa leaves the room. And Lady May says to Bishop, so what was that all about? And he says, well, you know, Zora, she's doing this project. And she needs a copy of the marriage license. And Lady May is just like, oh, mm, interesting. And she looks over her shoulder like, I'm not a fool. And we already know Lady May is already on the job, making sure that that's safe is secure. We do see finally that Bishop is still dealing with his Parkinson's before because in this season for all of these episodes it seemed to have been something that the writers forgot about but we we did see him take note of his hand and dealing with the pain and that his hand was a little shaky so we do see that Bishop is still dealing with this illness. Jacob makes a proposition to Dante and saying the situation that you had, I kind of have a solution for that. So we can get a double whammy with you cleaning up some PR and also you helping. So if you remember how LeBron, how he started his own school, well, we can kind of do some PR with that and you can also help people. I'm thinking about you making a donation to my wife's school. And Dante seems very insulted by that. He said, I was really looking forward to speaking with you man to man and talking about some things. But it seems like everybody around me has their hand out and they just want something. So I don't even want to speak with you. And Jacob sees an opportunity that he's just blown over and that he really didn't approach well. Charity lets Phil know that I talked to my dad about us. I told him about my feelings and I really think that you should come to my parents' engagement party. And he's just like, as what? She's like, well, as someone that's with me. And he seems very hesitant and he looks like, well, why did you tell your parents that? But he plays the game. We don't know if he's honest or if he's being deceptive. But he says, well, okay, well, in that case, I'll go to the party. Judy makes a proposition to the deacon board about this new Calvary and how it will come about. And they do ask her, well, you have all these ideas, but where's the money coming from? She says, well, you don't have to worry about that. And the money and the funding for this won't come out of any of your pockets or church or this church's pocket. The only thing we need is that we need seats at the deacon board. And Grace says, well, how much are we talking about? She says, well, 50, 50, 50. And of course they have people that have common sense that say, well, if it's 50, 50, then what about the rest of us? Because that means that some of us will be let go because we already have the numerics here. So what are you, what are you saying? And Judy says, well, you know, to be you guys still, but plus more of us added to this board and they're shaking their heads and they're kind of like, mm, this doesn't sound too good. They adjourn for the meeting. And in the hallway, we have Phil, Judy and Grace, they're talking. And Phil says, hmm, this sounds like a good idea and maybe it's something you should consider, Grace. And she says, well, I don't think this is a good idea and I don't think that you'll influence anybody on this board with that proposition because it really doesn't make any sense. And if we lose any of that, then that means we really won't have a say so, will we? And we don't know still if Phil is being genuine, if he's still with Judy on their side or if he's thinking of some things to come up with a gutter punch 
in helping the Greenleaf family. So we still don't know truly where Phil stands. We finally get to the party for that evening where all of the guests are coming in. And as we see this, this scene, there are several spin shots and montages of conversations going on. So we have Sophia and Zora and Nikki, they're talking amongst guests and trying to be friendly. We have Lady May talking with other people and a few members of the Deacon Board trying to tell them, you have to keep your eyes open with Harmony and Hope. I really think it would be a bad idea to give them any power because it would just diffuse what we mean as a church. We're really not trying to be at McDonald's pretty much. We really want to spread the word and we don't want to make this such a business endeavor that we're forgetting about the foundation of why we were here. We also see that Bishop and Phil are talking and Bishop says, I don't know what your, you know, ideas are with Charity, but she's still my daughter. I don't know what you're trying to do. I hope you're not being deceptive. I hope you're not being mislead, misleading because this is my daughter at the end of the day. And Phil says, you know, you don't have to worry about that. I'm still getting to know her. He's really playing the game and looking at her across the room and they're giving winks and smiles at each other. And Bishop is just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Lady May proceeds to make a speech. And as she, before she's about to make the speech, Carissa says, well, I'm about to go and do whatever. She's says like she has to go run an errand within the house and do something a little bit more important. And Jacob says, well, you're leaving now? You know, she's about to make a speech. And she's just like, yeah. She walks off and Jacob is just like, okay, I don't know what's wrong with that woman. And Lady May goes on to make this speech talking about how marriage is more than 50-50. It has to be God in the mix of whatever decisions that you make in your life and it has to be more than 50-50. And as she's saying that, she's looking at the deacons and she's looking at everybody in the audience, look at her. And Judy seems very disturbed, looking at Phil like, hmm, I think I get where she's going with this 50-50-esque. Trying to send out the message that it's not going to be a good idea for the deacon board to be split like that and making decisions. And of course, it makes Judy upset and she walks off. So Carissa, when she leaves the room, we see that, see that she goes back to the area where Bishop was and she memorizes that safe code. And when she puts in that combination, she opens it. But when she opens it, there's nothing inside. It is completely gone. And she slams that safe door closed and she gets back to the party and she's standing next to Jacob really upset and thinking, mm, this messed up my plan to get whatever was in that safe. Sophia, she's taken off from that party. She's had enough. And she's in Zora's cabin listening to music on her laptop. And she hears some noise at the front door. So she doesn't know if it's Zora. So she's calling out to Zora, is that you? She keeps hearing some noise. So she finally gets up to see what the noise is all about. And it's Dante with a box with the rest of Nikki's things because we see her name on the box. And he's saying, I'm just dropping off the rest of her stuff. That's the last of it pretty much like, you know, good riddance. And Sophia says, well, you know, they're still at the party. So you're Dante. You're the guy that I keep hearing about. And he says, yeah, that's me. And who are you? And what's your name? And she says, well, you know, I'm Sophia. And what I find interesting is that he says, well, I'm not doing anything pretty much. You're not doing anything. How about we go for a ride? And she says, well, Okay, and they proceed to go off and take a nice little spin. Judy and Phil wait outside the Greenleaf house as we have the attendants go get her car. And while she's talking to Phil, she mentions that her husband already filed the divorce papers and you can't be serious about loving that woman that's in there. And what about, you know, pretty much like what we had? And he basically brushes that off and says, are you going to be safe to drive home? She says, yes, I'll be safe. So he brushes off that sort of welcome to talk about them. But he lets her know that I'm not thinking about that right now. And earlier at the party, she says, are you serious about this woman? Are you forgetting that you and I used to be the same way? So the audience knows that at one point, Judy and Phil had something going on.
Carissa gives a very slow, sarcastic clap and applause to Lady May. And Lady May says, you know, what is this about? Why are you acting that way? And she says, wow, I never thought that at your own engagement party that you are saying that we need to look out and we need to be precautious. And you are putting on this show not only about this engagement or future marriage that's going to be mended together. You even put on this theatrical performance and that your father touched you and that you've been abused. And you are just trying to pull all the strings in order to gain some power Back at the church and Lady May says do you really think that I would make up being sexually abused by my father and she says well you know you did a wonderful performance this is great but that's not gonna work and Lady May opens the door letting her know it's time for her to leave and to go with God get out Bishop tells Charity to keep the love interest between her and Phil under wraps and keep it discreet until Grace is the lead pastor at the church. To just keep everything as the politics, to play by the rules until they can get Grace in that spot. And Charity says, Grace, lead pastor? She says, I can't believe that. And Bishop says, you know, we just need to just keep moving forward. And of course, Charity is upset with that and she's not pleased because once again, she feels that she's been put on the back burner and Grace or anybody else has been placed before her. Judy says to Grace, that was pretty interesting about what your mother said at the party. And Grace says, I don't have any control of my, over my parents. They are able to do any and everything that they want to and I can't control their words. And Judy says, you know, we really wanted to keep this under the wraps until my father got back. And even Phil doesn't know this, but this new endeavor that we're talking about, this new church, this mega church that's going to be nationally known, we want you to lead it. We want you to lead this entire endeavor. But in order for you to do that, you got to play along and you have to trust what we're doing. And Grace doesn't seem slightly convinced or impressed. Charity is so upset with Grace and it's becoming on the verge of jealousy because at the party, Charity tells Grace, you know, I really think it's interesting that I know all of this stuff about your son, your secret son and all of your secrets and that you've lied for him and all of this stuff. And as she's saying it, Grace is just like, you know, you're talking too loud. And she says, I know all this information about you. And I haven't told anybody. I haven't told anybody about your mishaps and your faults. But yet you snitch on me about the situation with me and Phil. So Charity was really upset about that. So to purge that back out, she goes to Phil and says, release the tape. Release the recording. It's time that my sister paid. And that is the end of the episode. So my predictions for this season and going into season five are pretty much still on point. Very, very predictable, unfortunately. I do still think that Charity helping Phil will backfire, but I do think that Phil is upset that he's found out he's being played like a fiddle because he wasn't made known to know about the land and what they were planning on doing with all of this purchased land with the church. So he feels left out and betrayed about that. Either one of two things are going to happen. They need a mole, per se, on the opposite side within harmony and hope. And that might be Phil. Phil might actually really love Charity. If he really loves Charity, he will be the key point to release information that's needed to take down Harmony and Hope. On the other hand, Phil is still playing the role. He probably still has love for Judy. He, you know, even though learning that he's just being played like a fiddle, he probably says, I'm making good money. I'm living a nice life. I'm still going to fight for Harmony and Hope. It's, it's one of two of those things. Because it seems that the way that the Deacon Board is feeling, hmm, they're probably being convinced that Harmony and Hope is deceiving and very deceptive because they've said, there's no way we're going to tr trust the Green Leafs again. So they're stuck between a rock and a hard place of who to believe. But now 
is it it's not even tipping more over with the green leaf family so something very deep has to happen in order for them to be convinced the way that judy's character has changed uh is pretty cheesy she comes off as this super cheesy villain uh, that's walking around with these secrets and knowledge and well when dad returns Because the way that her character was behaving earlier in the season doesn't match how she's behaving now So they made her out to be this villain and the way she's being portrayed as the villain is coming off very cheesy um, And I don't know why they did that at all. Don't know why the writers decided to make her so I don't know, <laughs> but a lot of the lines that Judy did and looking people deep in the eyes and making that turn with her hair, it, at times it was very comical, unfortunately. Um, also, how is Miss Nikki able to stay with Zora? Does anybody know Nikki is staying with Zora in this cabin? Is she just living there? Are they just okay with that? Or is the house just so darn big that nobody notices that she's there and maybe they, when they do see her, they think she's visiting? Are they okay with her being roomies with Zora all of a sudden? And where are her parents? Is anybody inquiring her whereabouts or where, where she is? I'm confused. And the number one question, ladies and gentlemen, where is Noah? Where is he? What plane is he on? <laughs> is he getting there via Pony Express? Noah, where are you? Riders, where is he? Did you forget <laughs> that in a few episodes ago you said that he was mentioning he's on his way to see his, his son and I'm going to see... Uh, I don't know. Okay, you guys, <laughs> let me know what you think. We are almost to the end of the season. It's still very entertaining. I'm still having fun. Um, but let me know what you think, thought about this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? But so far, my predictions for this season have been pretty on, on point because it's fairly predictable, you know, um, unfortunately. But let me know what you think. Also, a big announcement please make sure to check out on the channel my premiere episode of my podcast show the bunny show and the title of that episode is called you're so not okay uh, talking about mental health growth progression and being aware of how you can improve yourself so make sure that you check out that link I'll make sure to put it in the comments you guys enjoy this episode i hope you had fun make sure to follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e bye